Hi guys, in this video I'm just going to classify lots of different igneous rock samples. In this video I'm going to be using a lot of the terms that we've covered in the previous two videos. So if you haven't watched those videos just yet, I would suggest you go and watch them because I will be relying on a lot of the information that we covered in those videos in this one. So here's our first igneous rock sample. Firstly I would say that it is rather dark in colour and therefore contains minimal quartz within it. Because quartz is silica, I would say that the rock is a mafic rock, possibly even ultramafic. I would then say that the rock is hollow crystalline, however the crystals are very small and therefore cannot really be seen with the naked eye. Therefore I would probably say that it's an aphanitic rock. Because the crystals are so small, we can assume that the molten rock cooled very quickly. And finally, a rock which fits all of these descriptors is usually called basalt. Here we have another very dark igneous rock with minimal quartz. I would say that it is mafic to ultramafic, probably more ultramafic. It is a crystalline rock and I would say that it is hollow crystalline and has a phaneritic texture. It is formed from the slow cooling of a mafic magma. This sample is similar to the sample just before as it is formed from a mafic magma. However, this one is intrusive while the other was extrusive. This rock we would call gabbro. This sample is hollow crystalline, has a phaneritic texture and therefore cooled slowly underneath the earth. The sample has some quartz, however it still contains a lot of dark minerals and I would say that it is more mafic than felsic. I would say that this sample is diorite, however, it is moving towards being a granodiorite, which is an intermediate rock. If we then compare that diorite to this sample here, which is much more lighter in colour, therefore has more quartz, we would probably call this sample here to be intermediate and almost maybe felsic. Once again, this rock is hollow crystalline and has a phaneritic texture. This sample is a granodiorite, and if we then compare it to the sample we just looked at, the diorite, we can see that the diorite is much darker than the granodiorite. This sample here, like the granodiorite, is hollow crystalline and has a phaneritic texture, indicating it also cooled slowly and is an intrusive igneous rock. It is light in colour and has pink crystals, which indicates that it contains feldspar rather than just quartz. If we have a look at the minerals contained within this sample and have a look at them in relation to Bowen's reaction series, we would say that this sample is definitely felsic. We would say that the sample contains potassium feldspar and quartz and is therefore a granite. All samples containing these sorts of properties are usually granite samples. This sample is similar to the granite as it is quite light in colour and the pink colouring of the crystals indicates that it is a feld that it contains feldspar minerals. I would say that this sample is porphyritic as it contains phenocryst crystals within a ground mass. I would say that this rock is felsic and therefore is rhyolite. This sample is very similar to granite in its chemical composition. However, it has experienced fast cooling at some point in its cooling history. This sample here is quite similar to the rhyolite as it contains phenocrysts and ground mass and is therefore porphyritic. We can see the similarities here. It is much darker and contains mineral quartz minerals and is therefore, I would say, a mafic igneous rock. This sample is andesite. You may also notice that this rock has similarities with diorite as they are both dark mafic rocks. In fact, they both formed from the same magma type, but andesite experienced cooling on the surface of the earth and is therefore an extrusive igneous rock. Andesite is the extrusive version of diorite. This sample here is light in color and therefore felsic. The vesicles in the rock indicate that it was a volatile magma, which released a lot of gases. For the vesicles to be present, it must have cooled very quickly, and we can say that it is a glassy rock. This sample is pumice. This rock is dark and glassy and shows conchoidal fractures over its surface. 
We can say that it would have formed through a mafic magma which has experienced very rapid cooling. This sample is obsidian. This sample here shows very large crystals, which indicates that the molten rock either cooled very, very slowly or it formed from a very water-rich magma. Some of the crystals of this sample are euhedral because we can see their defined faces and edges. This rock is pegmatite. This sample shows chunks of fragmented rock, which indicates that this rock formed during an explosive eruption. We can see the rock fragments, which are then surrounded by volcanic ash. This sample is a volcanic breccia. That's the last sample we'll have a look at in this video. I hope it helped and thanks for watching.